The ocean is the largest living space on Earth and is full of interconnected habitats, not just side by side, but also on top of each other. For decades, Ambari scientists have studied who lives in these habitats. Some of the most dazzling denizens, and the most depth diverse, are the comb jellies. More than 200 different species of comb jelly live in the ocean, from the sunlit surface to the abyssal sea floor. They come in a wide assortment of sizes, shapes, and colors, but have the same main parts, a mouth, a stomach, sticky tentacles for capturing food, and shimmering comb plates for swimming around. Why are there so many kinds of comb jellies? And why do some only live in shallow water, and others only in the deep? Using Ambari's advanced deep sea robots, we studied 17 different species to find out, and we learned that only some of them can take the pressure. Water is heavy. If you dive deep, the weight of all the seawater above really adds up. Two miles down, the pressure is like the weight of a pickup truck balanced on an area the size of a postage stamp. That pressure applies to each square inch of an animal's surface, squeezing in from all directions. What's the secret to swimming gracefully under all that pressure without any hard armor at all? It turns out that a deep sea comb jelly's high pressure superpower comes from a nano-sized adaptation hidden in cells all over its body. A critical part of the cell for handling pressure is the membrane that surrounds it. And that membrane is actually a mosaic made up of even smaller molecules called lipids. From the side, membrane lipids look a little bit like people. Each has two legs and a head. When the membrane is happy and working properly, the lipids have a wedge shape. They fit together loosely, which makes the membrane nice and flexible. When a lipid is put under pressure, the legs squeeze down more than the head. So if a membrane that's flexible in shallow water is put under deep sea pressure, all the lipids are squeezed until their wedge shape is gone. Now the lipids fit together perfectly, like blocks. The trouble is, the cell is alive. It needs to be able to divide to make more cells and to send chemical signals. If its membrane is a brick wall, it won't be able to do any of that. How do the deep comb jelly species keep their membranes from getting stuck like this? They use a different kind of lipid called a plasmalogen, which has a wedge shape even under extreme pressure. With enough plasmalogens in the membrane, everything stays nice and flexible. But would a comb jelly that's adapted to survive under extreme pressure be able to survive up near the surface? The plasmalogen lipid's legs unsqueeze as pressure is released so much that they don't fit together at all, and the membranes split apart. This is catastrophic for a deep sea comb jelly. So why is it important to understand what's going on with the lipids in a membrane, in a cell, in a comb jelly, in the deep sea? Well, for one, our cell membranes contain plasmalogen lipids too. In fact, the highest levels are in brain cells. Comb jellies taught us that plasmalogens have a special shape which could help us understand how these molecules help our brains function. Ambari's advanced underwater technology provides access to the deep sea, allowing our scientists and collaborators to study the diverse ways life is adapted to thrive in one of the harshest environments on the planet. The ocean's depths hold the answers to fundamental questions about life on Earth, but deep sea animals and environments face a fragile future. If we don't protect deep sea biodiversity, we risk losing critical clues about the inner workings of life itself. Who knows what else comb jellies can teach us? This is Jacob Winnikoff with Ambari. Follow Ambari on YouTube to learn more about the amazing animals of the deep.